wash hands with soap and water. 4. If you have symptoms, stay home. 5. Get vaccinated as soon as you can. Together, we can help stop the spread. WWDB 860 AM Philadelphia and WPEN HD2 Burlington, Philadelphia. The following programming is sponsored by the Fishtown Kensington Area Business Improvement District. The views expressed do not necessarily reflect the views of this station, its management, or Beasley Media Group. Happy, happy, joy, joy, happy, happy, joy, joy, happy, happy, joy, joy, happy, happy, joy, joy, happy, happy, joy, joy. Good morning, everybody, and happy, happy, joy, joy to you, planet Earth. Of course, now we're all cleaning off the dirt from the bloomers in the garden. Always spray your weeds, Kay. And now you're listening to the fine stylings of Find It in Fishtown Live, brought to you by the fabulous Fishtown District for all things super duper special, miraculous, extraordinary, unworldly. Go to the Fishtown District. And of course, my name is Mark Colazzo, here with the really the better half of the entire duo, Kay Anderson. (laughs) Good morning, Kay. Good morning, Mark. Kay, and first of all, how are you? I'm I'm fine. How about you? Yeah, I know. Kay and I, of course, were spending the pre-show not preparing, but (laughs) bitching (laughs) about waking up in the pitch darkness. Thank you, WWDB, for the prime shift. But uh, that, of course, is our in-studio guest today. (laughs) Thank you very much. But hey, Kay. Yes. By the way, I got to switch these headphones. These things are like, the sound's bouncing from ear to ear. Oh, uh, yeah. It's, it's in no way frustrating. So I want to share that frustration with, with our audience yeah. today. Mm-hmm. But Kay, yes. where can we find that all great things happening in the Fishtown District? You can always go to fishtowndistrict.com. And if you want to watch us, which let's be honest, that's pretty much the gift that keeps on giving. How can people do that? <laughs> You can go to our Facebook page, Fishtown District, or find us on YouTube, Fishtown District. And of course, if you want to talk to me, okay, and really our fabulous guest today, as we learn how to market all things Fishtown District, we're talking about, well, Kay, you probably remember her, and I think our guests remember her from really the segment that people keep asking us to repeat. Yes. Of course, I'm talking about... Let's get rowdy with Randy! <laughs> Well, she's back, ladies and gentlemen. You don't have to inundate us with letters, carrier pigeons, smoke signals. We have her on today. Awesome. So get ready. Buckle in. (laughs) Our phone lines are going to be ringing. Oh, my God. The the goosebumps are just going to be flying up on your body. (laughs) And we know how refreshing that can be. And if you want to give us a call, give us a call at 888-329-3306. That's 888-329-3306. 329-3306. And of course, Kay, we're already getting notices on our phones about more flooding. Yes, we are. So now that we want everyone to know, every time it rains now, the city of Philadelphia, as a precaution, is telling you, get your U-boats and arcs ready. Mm-hmm. Look for animals walking two by two. And for God's sake, put on your floaties. I'm also expecting a tornado warning within the next 30 minutes, so... You know, I, I feel Thank like you, we're, Dar- Dorothy. we're pretty safe, you know, in a high building. In the high rise, uh, WWDB 860 AM studios, of course, yeah. really made possible by the profits from Find It at Fishtown Live. And we want to thank the thousands that have gathered outside again just to get a look at us. Uh, we appreciate all of you. And I hope you brought an arc. Yes, exactly. And speaking of arc, I'm boarding mine <laughs> as we take the, the beautiful sail over to that magical place that we love to call Case Corner. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? Stop what you're doing and listen. Nobody. Listen to me now. Pay attention. Case Corner. I'm just tying up the boat, but please continue. So, of course, today in Kay's Corner, we have a lot going on, as always we do in the Fishtown District. Um, So I wanted to first give a shout out to Maiden Maker, which is located at 2021 Frankfurt Avenue. So if you guys haven't been into Maiden Maker before, it is a um, vintage clothing shop. So they find all types of vintage vintage clothing um, from a bunch of flea markets, sales across the U.S., 
Um, and then they curate it and put it together in a lovely shop on Frankfurt Avenue. So they are actually working with um, a movie currently and what? just yes, and just completed a nineteen uh, eighties high school themed wardrobe. So if you go to their Instagram page, you can kind of check it out. The pictures are really cool. Um, and stay tuned because I'm excited to see that movie. What's the movie? I don't know yet. Is it's is not the Adam Sandler one that they're filming in Philadelphia? I'm not sure. No, oh. I feel like that's proprietary knowledge that I'm not pervy to. That's okay. We're really more focused on the biz, but that's awesome. Great job. Yeah. Um, okay, so, I fix my headphones. By the way. Oh, good. That was important. Rest, rest easy, planet Earth. <laughs> So we also had a new business open up in Fishtown last week. Hey! So Source Urban Brewery opened up at 1101 Frankfurt Avenue, and I actually got over there on opening day. Yes, you did. For lunch, because any brewery that opens Fishtown, best believe I will be one of the first people in there. And thoughts? Oh my God, Mark. So let me let me start from the beginning. I met the brewer, the brewer, um, and the owner. He was great, super nice guy. Um, Mr. Source. I, I don't think that's his last name. Oh. Uh, but he really knows his stuff. And if you haven't heard of Source Brewing before, they actually started in Southern Jersey, um, and they started as a farmhouse style brewery located in a farmhouse. Um, so they're taking some of those same styles of beer and putting a little bit of an urban spin on them and bringing them over to Philly. Very cool. So the beer is fantastic. Highly recommend. They are doing can releases. Um, they've teamed up with some muralists to do their, uh, can artwork. So you can check out all the cool things happening there. But what I'm here to talk to you about, Mark, is the food. Now you're cooking. Go ahead. So I got to meet the chef and- Source, chef source. <laughs> Again. Probably not his last name. Oh. But, so we ordered these lamb ribs. And I was kind of expecting like the normal lamb lollipops that you sure. get at a lot of places. And they're not, and they're good. They're great. These were straight up lamb ribs that were fall off the bone, slow cooked, but crispy on the outside. And oh my God, Mark, it was some of the best lamb I've ever had. And I told the chef that to his face. And he said, these are our staple like rendition. Screw chicken wings. We're going lamb ribs. Love it. If you go with seared animal flesh, you will never go wrong. Absolutely. And, and, and by the way, even the lamb in, in heaven is saying, worth it to give my life for this. So. <laughs> Fill that belly up, Kay. And I also had a meat and cheese board, which was, again, fantastic. Locally sourced um, meats and cheeses. So shout out to Source. And shout out, most importantly, because I think the bigger food critic, you will try and eat a lot of things. This is true. Sam. He loved the lamb. That's that's what I want to hear. Because yes. I know he's a little more... He's a little pickier than yes, me. Yes, yes. Yeah. I eat basically anything. But it, as long as he... He wanted to go back the next day, which means it was That's it was how good. good it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love it. So high recommendation from Kay's Corner. By the way, there's no greater recommendation that one can get. <laughs> Even I've heard of Nobel Peace Prize people wanting to turn that back in <laughs> just to be acknowledged here on the corner. So again, it, where, Source Brewery is where? That is at 1101 Frankfurt Avenue. Ch and open now, right? Uh, yes, it Check is. Check it out. They have uh, lunch as well, so you can get there on a lunchtime. Would love to do that. Yeah. If I ever did that. Um, in addition to that, we have another event coming up on- What? Yes. On what? September 29th, we have a Sips for Students event with Rivers Casino, our lovely sponsor. Um, if you haven't been to Hugo's inside of Rivers Casino, it's one of the best dining establishments um, in the city, really. I'm looking forward to it. And they're going to be hosting a tasting for us. We're going to learn about Liguori Academy and how to support the students there um, and get to meet and mingle and have a good time. And Hugo's is, is known also for its its fine meats and things, right? Isn't it? Yeah, I believe they have so great So you steaks. should taunt them with the lamb like, ribs. Lamb ribs. Like, can Just, you guys do lamb ribs? I don't know if you could top this. <laughs> like, lay down the... Because I think all chefs, they don't have an ego at all. Oh, Just no, not at all. Throw down the gauntlet and see how it goes. <laughs> uh, but, but I'm looking forward to... The tickets are only $60. Oh, great. So you get a lot of food, a lot of delicious spirits to go with it. You get to meet the chef at Hugo's. Um... It's well worth it. Where can people get tickets for that, Kay? Um, they can go to our Facebook page, Fishtown District, find everything there. Um, the tickets are for sale up on Eventbrite. Matt, well, how many tickets can we put you down for? 74. Oh, perfect. Well, that means the well, event is sold now out. sold out. So <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> 
Um, so also this weekend we have uh, a concert on Sunday. We do. So if you're not at our event on Sunday, which I will get to in a second, All right. you Matt, can go. Matt will like this one, the one on Sun, our <laughs> event on Sunday. <laughs> yes, you will. Um, but you can go to Harriet's Bookshop. Uh, at 2 p.m. on Sunday and see the lovely Suzanne Christine, who I've played multiple times on here. She is doing a live set with a band for free. That's awesome. What time is that? That's at 2 p.m., so check that out at 2.58 East Gerard. We're going to have a busy Sunday. Yes, we are. That's awesome. Got to gotta give a shout out to Janine as she extends her vast empire. And God, we're so proud that she picked Fishtown to start it. And... Um, that's going to be cool to have a little music going on in there. Yeah, I'm excited about that one. I'm definitely going to swing by there as soon as we're done at the U Dallas. That's right. Be Dallas, baby. So on Sunday, before you head over to the Suzanne B-A-T-L-E-S, Christine. Eagles. Right. What does that spell? Eagles. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes! <laughs> so the Eagles are taking on Dallas on Monday night, um, but we wanted to kick it off a little early Get a little shindig together. So on Sunday, we're going to be back out at Evil Genius with our friends from Inside the Birds. And they are bringing um, a former Eagle. Do you know? It's one of Kay's favorite players. Uh, Kay Kay remembers him fondly. Clearly. Yes. (laughs) Well, he played here for eight years during the Andy Reid era. Two-time pro bowler. Mm -hmm. Now, the Inside the Birds guys, of course, are nationally renowned reporters. Jeff Mosher and Adam Kaplan. Mm -hmm. And former Eagle, Quentin Michael. Will yes. be on hand from eleven to one, but I've been. I digress. <laughs> exactly. Now Matt knows who Quentin Michael is, don't you, Matt? Oh, of course. Yes. He's great safety for yes. the Eagles. See how excited he is. Clearly. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. It's gonna be fun. He's and he will be, be signing. You know, he'll sign autographs for people and all that fun stuff. So, Kay, tell us more about the event. <laughs> So the event itself will be happening at an, in partnership with Evil Genius. Uh, there will be food, drinks, and plenty of games to play, a DJ as well. So the full event itself is going from, I believe, 11 to 6? Well, the, the Inside the Birds will be there from 11 to 1 doing their show. Right. Live podcasting and all that fun stuff. And then stay and watch the games. Yeah. Now, uh, do you know what one of the games are? No, I have no idea, Mark. So we, of course, don't believe in liability issues here in the Fishtown District. So we will have axe throwing monitored by ex- excessive force. So it's on their liability? Okay. I don't yes. Care. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's, they said it all. They have, a, they have a portable traveling one. And, of course, the bullseye will be the Dallas Star. So um, get ready. Get your arms and shoulders ready. To fling sharp objects out in our streets. So I have thrown axes before. I have too. Um, and I got a bullseye on my first try. I did not. So you Shockingly. should probably just put me up against Dallas and I I got this. Yes. Now, it's named Ew Dallas. Uh, let me see. If, do you, either one of you know why? No. It's, it's because Evil Genius loves to do little quirky things based on pop culture. Mm-hmm. So if did any of you watch Shit's Creek? Yes. Well, David or, or his sister would always go, ew. Right. There you go. Now, I want to be very clear. I did not come up with that title. <laughs> Mine was Beat Dallas, I thought, but they're a little more clever than me. By the way, can you hear that? Yes, we yes, always we can. We hear it every time. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I wasn't sure. <laughs> yeah. The mics work. How old are you? What's that? Uh, I'm actually 53. Okay. And I've mastered technology. Can I keep going? <laughs> Good job. Oh, boy. <laughs> Um, so we also have some other events coming up More. next week that I'm not going to get too deep into because we have next Wednesday to talk about them. That's true. I want to tease one thing, though. I figured you did. On November 13th, in honor of Kay seeing... I think you saw all, did you see all three of... Yes, I did. Okay. In honor of seeing all three Back to the Future after Matt and I insulted and demeaned her into doing it. We, along with Evil Genius, <laughs> on November 13th, we'll be having our Back to the Future night in conjunction with the Michael J. Fox Foundation. Mm-hmm. So we are going to have actual original movie props. And when I'm not talking about just the hoverboard and Marty McFly's jacket, we're talking about there'll be a DeLorean that was used in the movie. 
Marty's pickup truck, and all other sorts of things. So stay tuned for that because you get to come out, take pictures with it. There'll be a special brew, of course, uh, put out by Evil Genius, and it'll be an otherwise good time. By that point, Kay, we will have had 27 events in the matter of October alone. <laughs> it feels like it, doesn't so it? So <laughs> we will be ready to sleep after that. I mean, next week we got three in a row, so... We do, but they're all worth it. <laughs> they definitely are. And plus, who doesn't want to see our smiling faces every week? America does. And if you want to see our faces, you can always go to Facebook and this check is, us out. This is the people clamoring for it. Oh, God. Ugh. I love microphones. And if you don't know, that's Mark slamming his mask into his microphone. I, know, I disagree with Repeatedly. that. Repeatedly. 888 Back to Kay's Corner. I think it's just time to get into K's track. I'm ready to boogie. K track. K track. K track. K track of the week. Word. <laughs> With extra percussion yes. added by Mark. You're very welcome. <laughs> So this week we have a track by an artist that I've been watching for quite some time now. Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> Sure, no. Oh, uh, <laughs> Where did that come from? I took a shot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Usher from Fishtown? You know? Yes. yes. <laughs> little, little Usher. Oh, God. Uh, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> um, this artist is somebody who is born and bred from Philly, um, but he's been going on tour, traveling all around, performing his music everywhere from Baltimore down to Atlanta and places in between. Um, so this is Bookworm, and that's spelled 369-K-W-O-R-M. There's no way I'm remembering that. 369-K-W-O-R-M. That's cool, though. <laughs> I'm going to give him that. Take, take that, Usher. <laughs> so this is Bookworm with Bushido. So that was Bookworm. 369K WRIM for those keeping score at home. Hey, look at that, Mark. Remember. Uh, uh, again, the tracks never disappoint. <laughs> uh, you know what? Someday we're going to have a place where people can get all of these songs in one location. Absolutely. How can people find out about Bookworm? Um, so they can find him on Spotify, Instagram, anywhere that you go to find musicians or music. Um, he also has an, a, re a release coming up on the 23rd called Prayer. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to. And by the way, I want to share this with Matt before uh, we break. It, we're going to be proud of RK today. She just told me something during the break that I think you're going to be happy about. Oh, yeah? She's picked her new movie series to watch. Mm -hmm. And she's watched the first one and loved it. Mm -hmm. we're talking about really the greatest Christmas movie ever. Mm -hmm. Die Hard? Yeah, exactly. Yep. I'm so proud of her. I'm so proud of her. Yes! 
Yippee ki yay. <laughs> our, our girls all grows up now. All grown up. Well, you're going to, and you loved it, right? Yes, you, the you, first one I loved. Didn't it make you want to be trapped in a building and would just buy, you know, <laughs> and kill terrorists? No, know, because I barefoot. could not do all yeah. of that in elevator shafts. <laughs> Like I, I no. I would have been. The, I would have just sat in the bathroom in the beginning and hope they didn't find me. That would have been me. It would have been. It would have been die soon. That would have been the end of the movie. Die now. Yes, yes. But before we break, hey, and we're going to stay here in the corner, really, hopefully forever. Let's play America's favorite game show. What's Mark wearing? Oh, hi, Mark. Hi. What are you wearing? What are you wearing? What are you wearing today? And What's Mark Wearing is brought to you by Fabulous Fabrica, F-A-B-R-I-K-A. The K stands for cool. Check out. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, boy. That was a good one. I can't. can't. Between Usher and that one. I today. Yes, yeah. This is is as good as it gets, folks. Cowabunga. Yeah, that's that's better. Thank you, um, Donatelli. Is is that one of the turtles? (laughs) Yes. Donatello? Yes. yes. Donatello? Do- I think Donatello <laughs> was his cousin. Yeah. <laughs> they never let him play with the turtles. Anyway, if you for all things great in entertainment, check out Fabrica here in the Fabulous Fishtown District. So, of course, today we want to honor one of America's favorite painters. No, I'm not talking about Van Gogh. No, I'm not talking about uh, Pablo Picasso. We're talking about the talented, the late, great Bob Ross. Bob, of course knew how to besides grow a mean fro he also knew how to pray, paint pretty little clouds mm-hmm. and so my shirt today of course by roosevelt's honors bob by doing what we all remember bob doing surfing on a painting palette let that let that take you let that take you out to the break i'd show you my socks they are just simply today there goes my headphones again Hold on. Oh, grilled cheese. Mm. You can't go wrong with that. Never. Never, ever go wrong with it. Get and some you know, tomato soup in there, too. What's that? Get some tomato soup in there, too. You know what? I'm not a big tomato soup guy. Oh, what? Grilled cheese and tomato soup? It's I'll so just have crazy. the grilled cheese. One of the cheese, best please. combos ever. I've not heard that. Or a grilled cheese with tomatoes on it. That'll work, too. Or some onions. Mm. Put bacon on it. Yeah, that'll and work. And brisket. Oh, yeah, see, now you're cooking. <laughs> okay. Fact, you could take the brisket and hold the grilled cheese level. if you need to. <laughs> Matt, could you order us some while we take a break here on Finding the Fish Down Live here on uh, WWDB 860 AM? We're going to be back to, to infotain you more with our special guest, Randy Shanene Sherwood. <laughs> we'll be back. It's been part of Philly for over 10 years, so Rivers Casino Philadelphia knows how you like to play. With better odds, more playtime, an upgraded rewards program, plus a state-of-the-art sports book, great restaurants, and more. Everything that real players want without the overpriced distractions. Rivers Casino Philadelphia is for those who play to win, not play to pay for some fancy new place. Rivers Casino Philadelphia, always on our game. Gambling problem. Problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Hi, I'm Dr. Edith Bracho sanchez with today's tip for kids from the American Academy of Pediatrics. The stress created by the COVID-19 pandemic can wear anyone down, but teens may have especially hard time. Feeling depressed or angry may be signs they need more support. Remember, parents set the tone at home. So try to stay positive, keep the lines of communication open, and talk with your pediatrician if you have any concerns. For more, visit HealthyChildren.org. The future depends on teachers. Every day, teachers are shaping our tomorrows, starting their students on journeys that will change the course of history. Right now, in a classroom somewhere in the United States, there's a teacher inspiring a future scientist who will make preventing pandemics their life's work, sharpening the mind of an aspiring environmentalist who will help combat climate change and generating possibilities for a student who'll be the first in their family to graduate college. It all starts with teachers who meet challenges with creativity, who reinvent education for the future. 
who work towards a school system that lifts up every child, regardless of race, income, or zip code, and who enable the full potential of our students, our communities, and our country. Explore a career that leaves a legacy you can be proud of. Shape the future. Teach. Learn more and receive free support at teach.org. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Happy. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Welcome back, everybody, to this is truly one of the greatest gifts to one's ears and eyes and senses. Another fabulous episode of Find the Fishtown Live brought to you by the fabulous Fishtown District for all things special, happy, joyful, miraculous. My partner, Kay, could tell you where to find that. You can go to fishtowndistrict.com. That's, you know what? You, you hit your radio voice with that every time. I don't even have to practice anymore. No, not even. It's like instinctive. <laughs> and if you want to give us a call here on WWDB 860 AM, give us a, it, it's By the way, it's toll free. Oh, good. 888-329-3306. That's 888-329-3306. We make it toll free, so we pass the savings back to you. <laughs> So. Oh, man, <laughs> you are off the charts today. Well, you, you know, just, by the way, I see that we have two producers today. Wow. We have Matt and Brett Yeah, the here. big movie star decided to make an appearance. Yeah. Ooh. What's, he, what's he doing? Brett, what are you doing? Hey, there he is. We missed you. We love Matt, too, but we miss you. <laughs> anywho, anywho. Might as well go back to the show, shall we? Yeah, Okay, come so. on. Stop distracting things with your usher and things. Because it's clearly me. It always is. Uh-huh. So, you know, one of the things, in all seriousness, let's bring it down a little bit. Okay. Let's, <laughs> right, get, let's get it serious. Of course. Is part of what we do, obviously, for those that listen to us, our job is to promote the people and businesses that make the Fishtown District special. Absolutely. And there's no, there's a very integral part of that is how we promote, market, um bring on campaigns and it is not as easy as it sounds so of course we had to bring in special talent of course couldn't find it <laughs> no i tease no we got the best in the business we're talking about the lovely the talented randy sherwood of red door advertising who joins her now what's up randy oh you're on mute randy she's starting off great you're still on mute Sorry, you guys had me on mute. Didn't realize. Hi, guys. There, hey. there you go. What's happening, Rand? So for those that don't know, it's 8.27 in the morning. Randy has been up since 4 a.m. <laughs> making sure her clients are taken care of. She's like the Marines of marketing. <laughs> By the way, you can use that, Randy. Thank you. I, I will think about that one. It's got to uh, go on the next brochure. So, and we, Kay and I, before we get to the series, is we're, we're commenting on... No segment has been more popular here on Finds It at Fishtown Live than, of course, uh, your one-time debut with Let's Get Rowdy with Randy. How has that newfound fame affected you? It's been difficult. Um, I've been having to you know, wear sunglasses and hats just to go outside. Well, do people now expect you to be, quote-unquote, rowdy all the time? <laughs> uh, and how do, yeah, you, how do you manage that with your real-life rowdy persona? I'm always, always on. I'm always excited and rowdy and ready to go. You know me, Mark. That's true. I've known her for <laughs> sixty some years now. Oh, and don't she, do that. she. Oh, oh. by the way, <laughs> like she. That long. Yes. Well, she looks exactly the same as the day we I met her. I, of course, have aged horribly. Life has beat the crap out of me while taking care of Randy. So we thought, why not take that magic and learn how to market our commercial corridor? So, Rand, tell us a little bit about your background in marketing and. What, why, why that field was you were drawn to it? Um, so I was drawn to it because I met a guy when I was um, just entering college. Was it me? He was doing, <laughs> no, oh. he was, um, he was a, a working uh, person oh. who was in public relations for the Flyers. Oh. And I thought that is the coolest job ever. That's what I want to do. So I, when I went into college, I went for journalism and thought, oh, I'll do that. Um, that was a lot harder then, you know, getting that dream job was a lot harder. So I started out um, in advertising, working for a company that did like malls and strip center marketing. So um, basically started out in kind of what I do now. So um, we used to do um, like some of the big malls and, and shopping centers. And we would get all of the money together, pool the, um, the advertising efforts, come up with different events and advertising campaigns for all of the stores. 
So now, I'm not unlike what I do now. No, and we're going to get to certainly you have experience both in businesses. Uh, certainly, you've worked on other commercial corridors besides the fabulous Fishtown District. Uh, I believe the slogan that everybody talks about uh, for years until we left, of course, make it Mayfair. That was one. That was one of yours. So, yeah. tell us what goes into helping promote a business. Uh, or or a commercial corridor because it's not as easy as saying okay let's go buy radio spots right so um you have to be a little bit of an analytics geek because you need to understand the demographics i'll turn it over to to Kay from here on out (laughs) (laughs) you need to understand the demographics you need to know who you're talking to so that you know what exactly to say so with um, a commercial corridor you've got so many different you know types of businesses and so many different Um, people to appeal to. So it's a matter of figuring out which message for which event or which message for which advertising media um, and basically know what your goals are in order to figure out what's the best way to meet them. So sometimes it's radio, sometimes it's an email blast, sometimes it's a big event, you know, sometimes it's a bunch of small events. So it, it all depends um, you know, on what we're trying to accomplish. By the way, Randy, you're missing this. The We're lowering the blinds here at the Find It at Fishtown Studios. It's truly, truly something breathtaking to behold. Um, but back to I'll you. So let's talk about, you know, obviously you, came, you joined us with me um, when the Fishtown District started. What was it about that that excited you? And what initially did you foresee how you would help promote it? So um, when you and I heard that Fishtown was going to create a bid, you and I were really excited because, you know, Fishtown has such a great reputation, so many great restaurants and shops and uh, art and all of the things that we were looking forward to. So um, immediately I thought, okay, we need to to start thinking about social media because, um, you know, with all of those different things, there's so many opportunities to talk about, you know, all of the great things in Fishtown. Then, Um, take that a step further and say like all the people outside of the Philadelphia market, outside of the Philadelphia suburbs need to know about Fishtown. So um, we've been talking about it since the beginning and our goals are really to bring people from, you know, whether it be a driving distance from New York, Connecticut, you know, Maryland to Fishtown uh, to discover all of the great things that we have, the, you know, the, the little boutique hotels and the fine dining and the great nightlife. Um, we, you know, we want to bring people maybe getting off an airplane, seeing something and saying, I, I got to go to Fishtown. So, or even take it a step further and say like, you know, people coming from, you know, the Midwest or California saying like destination, you know, Fishtown, I'll go see the historic district, but I'm going to stay in Fishtown. And, and while that seems easy, it's not, mm-hmm. what is some of the data that you look at in order to achieve that goal for a corridor like the Fishtown district? without trying to bore people at, you know, 8.30 in the morning. Um, we look at different things like, you know, what's the age, you know, average age of the people who are already coming here? Um, you know, what types of things are they looking for? Um, you know, what, uh, whether it's men, women, are they coming for the art? Are they coming for the, the dining? Are they coming for the, the boutique shops like Twa and, um, you know, different things like that? So, it's really a matter of taking all that information and, you know, figuring out, you know, who's, who do we need to talk to? Um, I can tell you that, you know, nobody's going to be surprised. Fishtown is, um, you know, got this great vibe and a younger demographic. Um, you know, a lot of families, uh, you know, will bring their kids, but it's also, um, you know, people over the age of 40 that are coming, you know, to, to try something new. Um, walk the avenue, you know, in the on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon. So we know a lot of businesses, um, even here in Fishtown, uh, marketing is kind of an afterthought when it comes to opening a business. Um, what are some of the recommendations that you might have for a business that doesn't necessarily have a robust marketing budget, um, but wants to get the word out there uh, and let folks know that they're here and, and they're open for business? Well, obviously, social media makes that a lot easier than uh, it used to be years ago. Um, You know, you can gain a a big following. Also, partnering with other businesses um, can help out a lot, that cross promotion. Um, So, you know, if you're, you know, looking to gain uh, a new audience, 
um, partnering with a business that has that type of audience is a great way to expand you know, who you're talking to. Um, the hardest part about starting a business and, and marketing it is um, you know, figuring out who, who's out there, how you want to say it. Um, so I think that the best thing to do is um, look at other people's social media. Um, you know, definitely um, friend them, you know, follow them, um, see what else is out there. I would also, I mean, obviously radio and television aren't an option for a lot of these small businesses. So it's going to be just, you know, making noise, getting those, um, you know, brand ambassadors, um, you know, doing the best that you can in, in terms of spending your dollars wisely, figuring out if there's events that appeal to people um, and getting involved in some of those. So you've also been very creative uh, in figuring out the best platforms and places to go with some of the uh, marketing tools that we're using for the Fishtown District. Um, talk to us a little bit about some of the, the changes in the industry that you're seeing and, and places of growth for businesses to be aware of um, in, in this area. Um, so I think that it's really important, especially, like I said, with the demographic being so young, um, things like Instagram, um, you know, and, and tailoring your message on Instagram, um, you know, obviously it's, it's very visual. Um, so I think that for businesses in the area to, to jump on, um, Instagram, but, you know, not just put pictures of, um, you know, nonsense, you know, really targeting, making their pictures tell the story for them. Um, people read so little. I mean, 130 characters is about the maximum that people can tolerate when they're reading, which is, you know, sad in many ways. But um, I, I think that, you know, for them um, getting on, on that social media platform, maybe getting on things like, you know, depending on how trendy or young your demographic is, you could TikTok. Um, or, um, you know, Snapchat, those are also avenues. Now, um, you know, it depends. It really depends on, you know, what's your, your end goal. Um, like I said, there's a lot of really great opportunities for um, partnering with big businesses like Beasley Media to do like email blasts that you can get out to a specific demographic or a specific zip code. Um, you know, and it's not really expensive, but it gives you the opportunity to get outside talking to those same people over and over and over again. Um, because when you're starting a business, you know, if you only have a hundred followers or even a thousand followers, you don't want to just talk to those same thousand people all the time. Um, so, I, I mean, I would definitely recommend that, that um, you know, they use those types of mediums to market their business. Sorry, what? <laughs> no, I'm kidding, of course. So what are some of the... Th mm -hmm. <laughs> some of it's going to be a great portfolio piece for me. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Going straight to the Smithsonian. <laughs> so what are some of the things that, you know, we, we started in January of 2020, and we'll, in, you know, in our next segment, we'll kind of talk about the pivot we've had to make because of the pandemic. But what are some of the things that you implemented um just to help promote the Fishtown District, and how would you, and how do you gain success when you're talking about a commercial corridor that you really can't? You're talking about 600 businesses. How do you gain success with a campaign? So that's a great question. So specifically for um, Fishtown, you know, um, you know, we didn't really have the opportunity, and you said we'll get into the next, but we didn't have the opportunity to do big events. So um, you know, measuring the number of people that come out. Um, certainly, social media growth you know, is one, um, you know, how many people are, are talking about, you know, your commercial corridor. Um, we did uh, things to help promote the businesses, you know, during the pandemic, um, you know, starting little campaigns like, you know, the, the 10 for 10, um, you know, campaign where we wanted people to purchase, you know, a $10 gift card at, um, you know, I think it was five, businesses in, in Fishtown to just try and help out the businesses. So there's lots of little things that we tried to do, um, certainly because, you know, things were very unusual early on. And with that, I got to tell you, Rand, you have certainly earned the nickname Rowdy. Oh, Lord. What? I told you I was an analytics geek. No, she's, what. this is very important. No, I'm, I've been good today. How dare you, Kay? <laughs> this is good. 
<laughs> this is good. Yeah, this is very good. As everyone shakes their head. And of course, if you want to be part of the magic that is this show, give us a call at 888-329-3306. That's 888-329-3306. Randy, do you think Shelly or Alan will call today? I do not, but I know uh, that they're listening. Uh, well, hello. Well, and I hope Paul as well. And you guys are settled back in in sunny Florida. Of course, they, they don't live far. That's Randy's parents, of course. Mm. They don't live far from our Florida correspondent, oh, Vicky good. Colazzo Spiegelman, who, of course, attentively listens while taking care of the dog and the many other duties that go on at uh, Spiegelman Manor. And with that, we're going to let that visual permeate your soul for a bit, and we're going to take a break, and we're going to be right back at you in two and two. It's been part of Philly for over 10 years, so Rivers Casino Philadelphia knows how you like to play. With better odds, more playtime, an upgraded rewards program, plus a state-of-the-art sports book, great restaurants, and more. Everything that real players want without the overpriced distractions. Rivers Casino Philadelphia is for those who play to win, not play to pay for some fancy new place. Rivers Casino Philadelphia, always on our game. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Disability is not inability. A person's ability may be different, but still an ability. No matter one's race or age, no matter one's physical or mental condition, we all have limitless possibilities. For more than 100 years, Easter Seals has helped the one in four people with disabilities in America live, work, learn, and play. I'm Angela Williams, CEO of Easter Seals. For more information, Visit EasterSeals.com. <laughs> Eleanor steals your heart. She was diagnosed at five weeks old, a type of leukemia, and it's associated with Down syndrome. Being able to come to St. Jude was a blessing and the best place for her. Talking to the doctors and nurses, they were on top of it. They got this, we got this, it's going to be okay, and we're going to get through this. Here, it's like a celebration of life. There's so much great stuff happening. <laughs> the doctors and nurses are her best friends, and you can tell that they love her, and you could tell she loves them, and that relationship is just amazing. <sighs> We're just so grateful <laughs> for them. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding cures, saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Happy, happy, joy. Welcome back. Happy, We're in the home happy, stretch of fun here on Finding the Fishtown Live, brought to you by the fabulous Fishtown District. I'm Mark Colazzo with Kay Anderson. Kay, always after hearing our public service announcements today, I literally want to run home and hug my child. Mm -hmm. um, Thank God we. Change the mood quite quickly. So <laughs> our special guest here today is our marketing director and marketer extraordinaire, Randy Sherwood of Red Door Advertising. Randy, by the way, what's the significance of the, of the title Red Door Advertising? So it's funny that you asked that question. So when I was well, um, starting the business, I couldn't decide what to call it. And, um, you know, the flyers was already taken. So I uh, was looking and I thought right, something significant. And I came up with Red Door Advertising and I went and did some research like everybody else. Um, you know, I Googled it and I said, you know, uh, Red Doors are supposed to be good luck. Um, they're supposed to ward off evil spirit. They show stability and strength. Um, so I thought, well, that's exactly what I want my company to be like. So that's how I came up with Red Door Advertising. Huh. And there's a quote, I believe, that you often use for Red Door Advertising from, of course, comedy legend Milton Berle. Which I get a lot of comments on, but the um, the um, the statement is, um, if, uh, God, now I don't, can't even think of it. You made me so nervous. Um, if, if a door closed, if an, op what is an it? opportunity is isn't there. Thank you. Thank you. If an opportunity isn't there, um, open a door. And we could start it again and just edit this out. Thank you. Could you, you could you do that? Because I don't use it anymore, actually. It's still, oh, um, it's, you use it's, Coco it's, Chanel now, don't you? I do. And it's funny because I got a lot of comments because people were asking, you know, why I was using something, you know, practically ancient, you know, because Milton Burrow was so old, but it was so appropriate. Um, so then I, of course, changed it to something more modern like Coco Chanel. But um, at least that felt like what was that quote? 
Oh, don't even ask these questions. I don't look at my own email. Please, anymore. please hire Randy Sherwood. Of, <laughs> that was it. Thank yes, you, Coco. That was a great, great quote. And we believe in that. <laughs> so, so of course, the world's turned upside down. And mm-hmm. I guess it was probably March of the. Uh, 2020 february of 2020 you know like 15 days after i started yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> after you were by the way deathly ill before that right uh thank you for infecting all of us yeah and so if coronavirus coronavirus <laughs> yep y'all are welcome <laughs> <laughs> so for those looking for the cause of corona katie you have an apology to make not at all <laughs> <laughs> so but Choose patient zero yes, yes. So I'm the super spreader. The the <laughs> K coronavirus. Yeah, Duh. we're just right off the rails today, man. <laughs> so the world obviously changed. The business world changed with the shutdown of the pandemic, but our job did not stop because mm-hmm. you know now we have to keep these places a, a, afloat. Not just for the Fishtown District, Randy, but all your clients. How did you pivot to help them? So interestingly enough, um, for a lot of my clients, um, they were in the service industry. So, and I know it's going to sound crazy, but um, I I would say probably two thirds, if not more of my clients were um, essential businesses. So, I mean, I I do marketing for a funeral home. I do it for a very large um, HVAC company um, that's owned by an energy company. So, you know, pretty much my work continued. My messages changed. How I was going to get that message out was um, was different. But for the most part, you know, things were, they had to get out there. They had to do the business. When you got to the Fishtown district, you know, it was a whole different set of, of problems because we were used to doing, like we did in Mayfair, you know, really big events and, uh, you know, bringing people. And that was the goal, bring people to Fishtown. Now we had to figure out a way to bring them to individual stores, either through making purchases on websites or, you know, curbside pickup and helping all of the businesses understand what opportunities were out there in terms of grants. Um, so, you know, the, the, the money, the message, you know, everything changed, um, you know, things like, you know, big radio buys, you know, were put on hold. Um, certainly our plans of bringing people from, you know, from California or, you know, from the Midwest here, you know, wasn't going to happen because people weren't traveling. So I think, um, you know, we, we responded really well in, in making people really aware of what the opportunities were in the fish district, what stores were doing, what restaurants were, were offering in terms of delivery and curbside and, um, you know, figuring out ways to help this, you know, the businesses survive, you know, the, the shutdown. Absolutely. And, you know, once the shut, uh, you know, and we're still obviously in it, but I guess it was June when, you know, we sort of received the green light to go. There was a, certainly a mad rush to do things. Why are, in your opinion, why are events important, especially for a commercial corridor? I think the opportunity for everybody to participate in events, um, you know, and bringing the right, the right people to the corridor so that they can see all of the businesses that are there and all of the opportunities, Um, you know, they may not be familiar with it. So those big events give us the opportunity to create a a huge splash, you know, and that gives us the opportunity to pull all those dollars together, maybe do a radio buy. We've done a couple of television buys um, on, uh, uh, what's it on Fox 29. Um, We've done some, uh, radio advertising. We've got, you know, plans to do, um, you know, some more radio advertising for Christmas. So those types of things, you know, helped us during the pandemic, um, you know, but those big events weren't, I'm sorry, I completely lost my train of thought. <laughs> but the, those You're listening events, live here to find it a fish down live <laughs> with Randy Sherwood, whose hey, memory you know, live radio, it's like Mensa live member Randy Sherwood. <laughs> No, no, as I say, but these big events really do help bring everybody together and give everybody a little bit of the spotlight. So those businesses that can't afford to do their own advertising because they don't have the dollars, uh, because they don't have the audience, get to share in the exposure of the, of the whole. And that's why I think the, you know, the big events really work for places you know, in the commercial corridor. And what do you see future-wise? We're, sort of, we're still in a limbo um, in fact, before we even get to that question, you talk about radio and TV. Um, mm-hmm. What's the significance now of all, there's all these streaming services, people mm-hmm. get their TV from, you know, different sources. 
Um, how is that option utilized? So um, what they call streaming television or OTT um, is know me. the opportunity to be really demographically um, targeted. Um, so a lot of people like are cutting the cable cord. You know, they're they're watching, you know, it's the Netflix, the Hulus, but there's a ton of others. It's all the apps. HGTV has one. Um, USA has one. Fox News has one. CNN has one. Um, you can literally just watch their programming. Um, and the great thing about OTT is it gives you the opportunity to buy on all of those different networks, but you buy by demographics. You don't buy by program. So in essence, what happens is if, if I, as a consumer, am listening to, you know, one minute I'm listening to, you know, CNN and the next minute I'm watching HGTV, this ad is going to hit me wherever I am because they're following me as a person, not necessarily me as a program watcher of a specific. So when you buy network television, you buy by program. You're going to buy you know, the morning news or you're going to buy primetime television or you're going to buy the evening news. Um, so you're buying by program. The great thing about you know, this out of uh, the streaming television is that you, know, you can be super targeted about who you're talking to. There's no waste. There's nobody that's not in you know, your target demographic. Are there old staples that people used to uniformly go to, to promote, to advertise that you shy away from now? I mean, unfortunately, I mean, certainly newspapers, you know, it's harder to, to, to justify spending money on newspapers. Um, you know, radio has great opportunity because they're streaming. Um, so, you know, people are listening at work all the time, whether it be talk radio or, you know, you know, whatever music station they're listening to, they can listen at work. Um, they can listen on their phones. So there's so much more opportunity to, um, to utilize those mediums outside of the home. Um, I, you know, as far as, you know, it, direct mail still works great too. Um, believe it or not, direct mail leads people to the internet to make purchases. So um, I think things have changed. I wouldn't say that there's like a, a medium that I would absolutely never use because even, even newspapers have online um, and have a really loyal following. So depending on who you're trying to reach, you know, there's, there's hundreds of different ways to reach them nowadays. And I know this is a very general question, but what is the, I guess your old reliable that you know, I got to get a message out. This is the first place I go crazy but it's social media it's absolutely social media because it's it's inexpensive i mean anybody can do it you don't you know you don't need to pay to do it and then if you do pay to do ads on say facebook or or instagram you can do it again and you know for a really small number so it it's really affordable for you know all size businesses what's the what's the biggest or most used social media platform that you find at least for businesses um for businesses i would Still say that, uh, you know, it's hard to say because some businesses don't use Facebook at all, you know, depending on who they're trying to talk to. Um, but I would say that that Facebook is the is the bigger and better. It gives you the opportunity for events. Um, it gives you the opportunity, you know, to um, get a lot of messages. You can share links where on Instagram you can't share a link. So if you've got an event, right, you can't share that on, on Instagram, but you can share it on Facebook. Um, Facebook is interesting because, you know, it's an older demographic. It's, it's changed over, you know, it's short, but interesting history. Um, but it, it's definitely the best place to get out the most information to the most people. Cause even the kids who say they're not using it still occasionally look at it, will get notifications on their phone. So if people want to find you to, so that they can cro really build their business into a multi gazillion dollar empire. How do they find you? They can find me at uh, reddooradvertising.com or um, certainly they can contact me through the Fishtown District at fishtowndistrict.com. Oh, and now Kay is, is chomping at the bit to close the show with you. So, Kay, go <laughs> I'm ahead. I'm prepared, Kay. I'm prepared for your question. Go ahead. I was going to say, I know you're kind of biased, so I expect a robust answer from you. Um, what are some of your favorite places to go in the Fishtown District? 
So my favorite places, in, and I don't know if other people have said this, I love Jefe's Tacos. I think they're awesome. I think it was one of the first places that Mark and I went when we came to the Fishtown District. I love that you can sit outside. I love the the food is amazing. I think I get the same thing every time I go. As do I. But I also- I've still never had it. Oh, so got to get the Guido's nachos. <laughs> I got to try it. Oh, delicious. Um, yeah, I was going to say, but also I really like chew. And um, uh, probably- <laughs> but one of the reasons I liked too um, was because it was so eclectic, very interesting um, options. And I love Front Street Cafe because I just love their outdoor area. I, I think they've done such a great job with that. Um, I still have, there's so many places I want to try. Um, I was going to say, uh, Cafe Badia was, was amazing. Mark and I went, took my husband, had to try the best pizza. So, um, and was yeah, it I the best on. pizza? That's what I heard. <laughs> as long as long as you agree, <laughs> I absolutely she, agree. I don't know if she agreed as much as she said. Well, that's what I, I heard. Really it was it was great, and you know what was even better? Their their pizza was was fantastic because it was real thin crust. It was really good. The wine that they paired with it, which was just like their their house red, was perfect with the pizza. So that's what it is. It's the wine. Always with gets the back pizza. to the booze that's with Randy. Me. I don't know about everybody else, but that's what it was for me. That's and right. luckily, like Randy can get plenty of wine and booze in the fabulous Fishtown District. Randy, as always, I'm sure I'll be talking to you later. It's a pleasure. Keep up the great work. And everybody, if you. if you need help promoting your business, go see Randy at Red Door Advertising. Kay, as you can hear by the guitar tunes and Ren and Stimpy. Time to pull this episode to a close. Great job as always. Matt, control yourself. I'll do my best. Uh, Hope to see everybody in the Fishtown District today, tomorrow, every day. Find it at fishtowndistrict.com. Goodbye, everybody. Let's try it again. Happy, happy, joy, joy, 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 happy, happy, jo